Man loses his wife, goes gay, and gambles. And that's it. That's the play. Well, actually, it's not that simple, now is it? <laughs> Hi, I'm Olivia, and you are watching I'm Going to Explain the Plot of Risky Game. Hopefully. I did three days of analysis, let's hope it wasn't for nothing. Um, so as a disclaimer, I will only be pulling from play sources, meaning the event story play part, the chibi play, and the song, to make it less confusing, less messy, and overall just make it easier to comprehend, even though most plays actually mirror what happens in the event story for that play. And despite my appearance and personal affinity for July, I am not thinking about Gekka. I will not be bringing, Ge bringing Gekka up. And I could throw all caution to the wind and say that Risky and parallels Isoka's time in the organization, and that it is all just some sort of reflection on that. But if I admit that's right, then I'm retconning this whole video, and even though that is exactly what Libra did, that is not what we're talking about. Yet. In case you need a recap on the play, the play is just about Liam, who was tricked by his fiance Catherine and was left with a million dollar debt and he has to go and basically pay off this debt without her because she had choose to run away. And that's like essentially the plot of the play and like the short version of it. But um, obviously it's so much messier than that, it's so much worse than that, and it's so much wilder than that. So, I'm now going to try and bring up one of the only newer things I think I'm going to end up mentioning in this video, mostly because it's one of the only things that I think is definitely hinted at and indirectly told and I can prove. And you're going to see how this gets messy in a bit, but like, just stick with me here. So I'm going to introduce you to the concept that Liam and Catherine are both scam artists, and I believe this because of the fact that, well, A, Catherine definitely probably knew how to trick Liam into co-signing on her debt. Um, which, well, either, either she actually tricked him into signing it, or that she just forged his signature, either way, she definitely tricked him, and I definitely think that gives her scammy vibes, but I say Liam is also a scam artist, mostly because of what happens when Ledley shows up. Ne. Uh. Hmm. So Ledley is shown to know Liam, and when Ledley approaches Dominic and Liam in the casino, a Dom uh, I don't think he, in reference to Liam, could rip me off of everything I have, which is a small amount he has. And that is when Ledley then says, Liam is a pro. And so this implies that Liam probably could maybe legally gamble his way with his money, or he could just scam him. And I say also that Liam is definitely into scams because when Ledley hints that he has information about Catherine's disappearance and he says I'll gamble you for it to Liam and Liam asks Norman to host the table, that is not the right term but that's the term I'm going to use from lack of remembering right now and when Liam asks Norman, Norman says haven't I told you that I can't be doing quote unquote work when we're here? Exactly. Definitely gives off these vibes that Liam is at least the tiniest bit shady. So now that we've established, possibly kind of established, that Liam and Catherine are scam artists and that Norman also helps them, this definitely brings in a new air of blackmail that could be happening, especially on Catherine's end. Because in the song especially, but also in the play, both Liam and Norman are very very focused on how they were both tricked by Catherine. And also, I say that there's possibly blackmail going on because of this one line, so when, at the very very end of the play, when Liam confronts Norman about knowing, Liam says, or I mean, sorry, Norman says, I'm not in that kind of relationship with her. I owe her older sister a favor, and she clung to me in tears. I have anything against you, but there is no other way. And to which Liam then replies, it doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, it's not like you could dirty your own hands and lose your job. And I don't know, but I always found the idea that he would dirty his own hands and lose his job by simply helping someone to be a little excessive. So there's definitely blackmail probably in this situation, and that just, I think, further proves that they're all kind of scamming here. This is where things start to get messy, and you're gonna see. So, in the beginning of this video, remember my disclaimer? Where I said I would not be bringing up the event story? Yeah, guess what? 
I fucking lied. Yeah, no. This play is meant to parallel exactly what happens to Hisoka and Azuma in the event story, and you're probably like, what the fuck does that mean? So in the very, very first chapter or episode, I'm going to call it, of the event story, so Mookie says, in reference to Ahsoka playing a lead, you have a great advantage of being able to act realistically in a way no one else can imitate. I think you have more than enough skill to tackle a lead role. I bring this up because this sort of reminds you of Ahsoka's entire situation and past and whatever, and that, you know, he doesn't really know his past and that he chooses to live in the present, and throughout the entire event story, he is struggling with the idea that if I come to terms with everything that happened, if I live in the present, I can get over my past. And this, yeah, he's like as a blank canvas. He's just a blank canvas. And if you apply this concept to Liam, I definitely think things get a little bit interesting. So if what happens in the play is meant to parallel what happens in the event story, how does that work? So Liam is also someone who is chasing his past and what i mean by that is that he's chasing catherine he is on a wild goose chase to find this lady <laughs> like just genuinely he just wants to find her ask her yo what the fuck's up with this debt and then pay it off he actually doesn't work on paying off the debt at all until the end of the play when he only has a few hours not even left to pay it off and that is a direct parallel to what Isoka does throughout his entire time in Mankai and also in the event story specifically. He's chasing his past, he's chasing what he remembers of his past, and then finally he comes to terms with the fact that I won't know my true past, I won't be able to understand it fully in detail, this, that, the other, and he just chooses to live in the present and get over it, which is what Liam does with Catherine. So then... Definitely can see the Hisoka Liam parallels, but what about the Ozma Norman ones? Well, Norman was tricked by Catherine, but he's not really in a position to lose a lot. Even if Liam didn't win that bet, and even if he didn't win the money and went to jail or this or the other, it wouldn't matter to Norman. He really has no consequence besides the fact that he had to help her or else he would lose his job. And I bring that up because that just means that Norman was just a byproduct of a situation. He was stuck in this incident, and in the end, it, there wasn't much he could do to help anyone else, but he had to help himself. And that is what happened to Ozma in his life. He had no direct correlation to what happened to his family and his brother, but he's an innocent bystander in it, and he just has to accept it and do what he can to keep himself afloat. Yeah, do you see why it's a little messy now? So then, how do these Ozma, Norman, Liam, Hisoka parallels tie into Risky Game and its plot? Well, it just brings a new light to the situation. Liam was fucked over by Catherine, and he tried to find her, couldn't, and had to inevitably just fix the situation as best as he could in the moment. And Norman was also fucked over by Catherine, but he just had to do what he could for himself and accept the situation. That's it. Risky Game is about accepting your situation and just getting the fuck over it. And that is exactly what happened also to Isoka and Azuma. So, in the end, I guess you could say the plot of Risky Game... Is Liam and Norman making out on a poker table? Thank you for your time.